All right. First thing we want to do is lay out the finger rail, which is a UK size N. And then I'm going to put some modeling aids in here. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is for the shank at the bottom is 1.2 millimeters wide. And the shank at the top is 2.7. And the height of the stone was 4.5. And then I was at a quarter millimeter on the inside of my uh, bands. Um, I'm going to throw this over here on this modeling aid layer that's always locked. I always had that quarter millimeter, so when I sand the inside of my shank, um, it's not going to remove so much metal. I got to end up sizing it. And after I rebuild it, to a degree three curve I'm going to rotate it around so I have control points on my quads on the sides and not one at the top and that just is easier for me to to deal with so I'm going to scale this down and then I'm going to scale it again with copy to make the outside of my shank here Okay, turn my control points on. And I'm going to relocate the gumball down to the bottom. So when I scale it, it scales from the bottom. And just accept the defaults for the X and Y location. I'm going to scale it up to the top of the shank if I can get it to, to match up. And you can use scale 1D. Um, to do this precisely and make it a little bit wider on the sides If it was super critical, I would use scale 1d, but if not, I just use the gumball I'm going to copy this from 0 to 0. So I have another copy of it And on the copy, I'm going to move it Move the gumball to 0 or to the bottom of the shank, not 0 and scale it up And this is going to be the curve I use to set the uh, stones out on Make that a little bit wider and again scale 1d would be precise if I needed it for this model and then I'm going to use the uh, gems by curve to lay these gems out and put our center stone in and our side stone and I gotta go over here and set this to 270 so that they're angled the right way I have to do this for every curve that I set a stone on and then I'm going to adjust the curve seam to be directly at that top quad point and the rhino gold little round ball is getting in my way So just move that little guy out of the way and then adjust the seam here. All right, make it right at the quad. And then I can tell it to start putting the center of the stone at the beginning of the curve. And switch over here to perspective view. And actually let's switch over to the right and lay out the side stone. We've got two of them, move it to that side And then we're going to mirror it to the other side. Move that down just a little bit. And give them a little bit of a rotation. Okay, that looks about right. Okay, so a little edit point there. Now I'm going to extract the uh, curves from the gems and go ahead and offset them by three quarters of a millimeter. And I'm going to use blend, uh, blend curve 
to do this. It'll make sense in a second, but for right now, I'm just going to offset them all by three quarters of a millimeter and then trim them back um, just using split with a point to cut them away. And I never cut them away quite enough. And it looks like on the picture that there's a slight bevel. So I'm going to move these down a little bit. Now let's split it. I'm just going to use a point to cut this back to just the parts of the curve that I want to keep. The rest of it's going to be filled in with blend curve. And I should probably cut these back a good ways, maybe a little more. I'm probably going to regret that. I probably should cut it back a little bit more. Um, you have a lot more control with blend curve, the less of a starting curve you have to begin with. Because um, whatever the starting curve is, is going to be fixed. Whatever's not there is going to be filled in with blend curve. So, <clears throat> cut those away and do that for the insides, inner circles for the side stones. Alright, and these pieces of curve that are left are at the right Z height where I want my final curve to be. So I'm going to start blend curve and you can see with my stones on that those little bits of curve are at the right height. So I'm just going to blend between the two and just play around with the these two points using curvature continuity. Just trying to make it hug the stone and then have a good shape to it. Probably should have started with the other one first. Okay, once it has a good shape, I'll move on to the next one. Now, let's do the inside one first, and then we'll use the outside one to make it match. The inside one, we're going to hug the stone. Kind of straighten it out a little bit. Okay, that looks good. And I should have trimmed that one, that the curve at point one back a little bit more because it's got a little hitch right there. If you don't trim it back far enough, then you're going to be stuck with what you got. You won't be able to adjust your way out of it. But I'm just trying to make this an even line thickness the whole way through. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be... It's going to look good to the eye, at least. Alright. Okay, that's looking good. Move on to the next one. Where are you? There you are. Alright, we're just going to try and make this a nice even line thickness. We've already got our shape. Alright, it's going to be a little thicker there. And for the bottom stones but that looks good and that's a nice gentle sweep down from the top stones to the side stones um, it's multiple curves that are joined together right now so let's take and uh, rebuild these curves uh, rebuild curve non-uniform and 
and tolerance. We're just going to use 0 0.05 so it's not too too tight. And then turn my control points on. Not my control points, my uh, O snaps. Alright, well, let's make a surface out of them. I'm going to make it loose. And that doesn't look good at all. So. Ah, uh, that looks worse. Alright, scratch that. Let's go and add some lines in here. And we'll use a different tool. So, just going to draw lines across. so that the curve the V will sweep around the U of the curve or the surface and be a little bit more even being squinched up in places and oh, okay they all fell to the floor do that again. Okay, let's do a sweep, sweep two, and then use these as our profile curves. Pick them all at the same end, and that looks much nicer. Oh, try that again. Okay. Loosen it up just a little bit. And that looks like it's tracking the, the stones pretty well. Tell it okay. I don't think loosening it up did anything at all, but alright. Now instead of trying to move this, I'm gonna offset the surface. Because if I move it, it's not gonna line up just right. Um Offset will do a much better job of offsetting the surface by its normals instead of just an XY direction. So I'm going to tell it uh, loose. Oh, it was already on. Solid. And let's do a half millimeter. So it's going to be a half millimeter taller than the girdles of the stones because right now it's even with the girdles. All right. That'll give me a half millimeter lip that I can use for the setting. And let's go ahead and take the bottom off of it. Okay, we're just going to move this down. Switch over to the front view here. And move this down. Uh, let me switch my drag mode. So that goes straight down with it. And then I want to shrink as it gets towards the bottom of the... Uh, to the base of the band. So I'm going to do scale from the center point and just bring it in. And I add copy on. Alright, let's delete everything except that top surface. And we'll loft the sides together. Uh, 
and loft this side and then ah don't use loft for size just use network surface unless it'll cap nope not planar okay let's just use network surface what I should have done to begin with and do the other side join everything together all right and there's my S okay let's nope can't mirror it let's rotate it around use copy okay now we got one on both sides all right so let's move that off dump that to another layer uh, mill head and move those curves over and delete those extra surfaces okay let's do the profile for our curve I'm just going to draw a box to be the size we want here all right, it's supposed to be 2.5 wide and I've got a little bit thicker than it's supposed to be if anybody ever says the rings a little bit too tight I can just sand on the inside of it and move it a quarter size without it being a big deal all right I'm gonna draw a curve using that box as just to rough it out and then adjust one side and not the other the other side doesn't matter because I'm going to use a little tool from Pascal Golay at McNeil which is curve symmetry And it's going to make the points on one side uh, identical to the points on the other. So there's my control points. I'm going to move these over really, really out of the way so you can see when they change. Um, there's some auto options. Um, they never really work for me. I don't know how they're supposed to work because it's just a little script. There's no no command form uh, none of these ever work for me that, that made it mirror down at the bottom but if you just choose um, no that one doesn't work Uh, I just bent it backwards again. All right. So if you just use user, and just like you were using the mirror command, just give it a mirror axis, it's going to take and mirror the points across uh, the axis that you defined. Even if you were to delete some of the points, even if you didn't have the same number of control points on each side, it'll still make it mirror over. So, curve symmetry, Pascal Golay, McNeil, Google it and you'll find it. 
He's got a bunch of scripts out there. A lot of them are very useful, like planarized curve. Take a curve with a slight wobble to it, and it'll average out a plane and make it exactly planar. Okay, so that's all I need. So let me get my shank here. And there's my ring. I can tell it maintain height. And okay. Do not simplify. Okay. Tell it okay. All right, let's pop our head on here and see how that looks. And I'm missing the top surface. That surface I deleted earlier was not an extra surface. It was the top to this surface. I just didn't, just didn't join it together properly. Okay, so we're going to have an edit point here. I'm going to go back, 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 get that surface and uh, join it back together. Okay. So I went back and got the other surface, and I noticed that my bottom surface uh, extended out the sides of the ring shank pretty bad. So I took that bottom surface and scaled it down some more, and then re-lofted and redid a network surface for the ends. And now it's going to meet up with my shank a little bit better. And I'm just going to use the ring rail as a wire cutter. Just run the wire cut command with that finger rail. And I'll cut off the inside of that head that I don't need. But let's go ahead and... Yeah, that matches up with the finger rail quite a bit better. All right, go ahead and rotate it around. And turn my gems back on. Rotate them around. Okay. And there it is, the finished ring. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.